Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining our webinar. Uh, today we're really excited to be talking you through Beauty Forward 5. My name is Jasmine Shah and I'm Customer Experience and Trends Leader at Clariant. Now Beauty Forward is actually Clariant's trend catalogue and today is all about the launch of our fifth edition. The objective is really to inspire and so we do this by identifying strong trends that we see that are present globally and then we use our chemical expertise to link these trends to formulations containing our ingredients. The objective here is really to provide examples of ways in which personal care formulations can link to global trends, but also to add a little bit of context um, to our ingredients and think about ways in which we can link innovative chemistry to global trends that we see happening. So with that, um, what ends up happening is that we launch on a yearly basis um, a combination of trends, formulations and ingredients. And these really make up what Beauty Forward is all about. What we also do on a yearly basis is that we conduct market research and we collaborate with many different parties to actually identify the strong trends that we believe to be influencing the beauty and personal care market. So with this in mind, I'm absolutely delighted to announce that joining in today's discussion, we have Alex Fisher, a beauty and personal care specialist from Mintel, who's really helped us to identify some core trends in the space and who's going to be weighing in and providing insights on these trends today. Hi, Jasmine. Hello, everyone. Also joining today's discussion is my colleague, Karina Shalupa. She's one of our Clariant formulation specialists who's even made a few of the formulations that we're going to be um, discussing today. So she'll be really able to weigh in on the more technical aspects of today, as well as the ingredients behind each of the formulations. Hi, Jasmine. Hi, Alex. Hello, everybody. Before we dive in today, I'd also just like to mention a few housekeeping points. First, I'd like to draw your attention to the Q&A box. So if at any point throughout the course of this webinar you have questions um, or you'd require clarification on anything, please feel free to let us know. I'd also like to point out that in the additional information, you will find our formulation brochure. So you'll be able to access all of the formulations we mentioned today in full. Um, what we appreciate, though, is that as well as each formulation, it's possible that you'd require a little bit more information on select ingredients in each of the formulations. And so what we're going to do is after mentioning each formulation, we're going to be conducting an ingredient poll in which you can select the ingredient that actually really interests you. And we'll be able to follow up with extra information about that. With this in mind, um, let's dive in. introductory video to give you a bit of a sneak peek into the formulations and the trends that we have in stock for you today. But now on to actually explaining it and getting really into the crux of the matter. So we're going to start off by talking through our first trend, which we've called Ubuntu. 
Now, translated from Zulu, Ubuntu roughly means I am because we are. So it's really a term that embodies the concept of sense of community and togetherness. Now, of course, togetherness is something that has been a fundamental human need since probably the beginning of time. But following a year of social restrictions, the concept of togetherness seems to be something that people are becoming increasingly aware of and that they value more highly. So now coming over to you, Alex, um, what, what does this mean? Could you explain a bit more about togetherness in today's world? Yes, yeah, sure. So um, as friends and families were we were kind of forced to stay, to stay apart um, just because of social distancing and quarantines. Um, but as we were doing that, our need for physical contact and face-to-face -face interaction, it just became more apparent to us. So until now, we've kind of got to the point in society where we've taken that for granted. Um, so the pandemic really kind of made people more aware of the importance of being together. Yeah, it was a bit of a you don't know what you have until it's gone kind of situation, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there's definitely been a real restructuring of people's priorities over the last year. And that sense of togetherness is really valued more highly. Um, and because of the kind of value that we're putting on it now as a basic human need, we're seeing a lot of people taking really active steps to achieve any sense of togetherness that they can. So, for example, just you know, being online um, and connecting with people online, a lot of people have kind of bemoaned technology and saying that it it's uh, made us more distant from each distant from each other. But actually, for many, it's become the only way to stay in touch with the people we love. And so, I think people see the value in that a lot more in you know online interaction and also just online communities. Um, but still, what kind of technologies taught us? And what we've learned from that being together through technology is that actually it's it's no substitute for real life interaction that we really crave. Um, so as the world starts to open up again, you know, albeit at different rates, depending on the region, um, people have already kind of told us that they really intend to prioritize physical togetherness with loved ones. Um, so, for example, over half of people across all age groups say spending time together with family and friends will be a primary motivator for traveling in 2021. So, you know, just one example of, you know, a situation where physical togetherness is really going to drive uh, consumer decision making and that's something that's going to continue over the next year so while we've got used to being alone we're going to have to start to get used to being together again and that can be really uncomfortable for a lot of people who have had that extended time away from people and so I think we'll start to see everyone seeking out products that are going to increase their level of comfort when we are sort of in those scenarios. Mm hmm. Yes. So that that made complete sense to us. And I think what we started to think about was linking this in with beauty and personal care and thinking about products that could really cater to this increased level of togetherness, in particular, you know, people meeting again, what could make them feel more comfortable with this? So one example that really sprung to mind for us was thinking about something like mask wearing, which is definitely something that's almost a prerequisite for togetherness in this day and age, but I think brings with it um, certain skincare concerns. Oh, yeah. Um, so mask wearing, you know, it's still mandatory in a lot of places if you're going to be in a group. Um, but also, I think it's something that instills that little sense of safety for a lot of people and that kind of comfort for people who are maybe vulnerable or they're still a bit wary. Um, but as you were saying, it, it, it brings up these skin concerns. So, you know, it can chafe the skin under the mask, um, cause real aggravation, especially if people have sort of facial hair or they're wearing makeup and so it's starting to clog up the pores and that causes spots or dryness um, but basically all of these things that really don't add to that feeling of comfort and make us feel quite uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah so with this in mind we thought about how we could address this trend and how we could really think about the type of products that would make people feel more comfortable with wearing masks and with togetherness, so to speak, in this day and age. So with that, um, I'm really happy to introduce you to our first formulation, which we've called the Soothe and Cool Facial Serum. Right, 
So we hope that the video explained and gave you a bit of a feel for what the Soothe and Cool Facial Serum is all about. For us, it was really keeping in mind that mask wearing is something that enables togetherness. We were trying to really counteract the skin irritation and the dryness that a lot of people really experience when it comes to mask wearing. So what we did was we created a nice serum that really delivered some cooling, soothing properties, as well as some hydrating and moisturizing properties. But now over to you, Karina. From an ingredient perspective, what is it in the formulation that really enables, enables these soothing and moisturizing properties? Well, um, there's a few ingredients that give this formulation those properties. Um, we have used two different active ingredients. One is called Multi-X Humidity Max Plus. It's an active ingredient that is a combination of natural moisturizers. Um, your skin feels cared for and it's moisturized, uh, but it also improves the skin barrier function. Um, so we can reduce skin irritation and we can reduce water lifts from skin. The second one we have used is called HerbX Korean Ginseng. Um, it also improves skin texture and protects skin from oxidation. So it uh, really works against those skin irritations. Mm -hmm. um, not an active ingredient, but another important uh, ingredient in this formulation is squalene. As you all may know, squalene is a component of the human sebum. Uh, added in this formulation, it absorbs rapidly, it leaves the skin with a comfortable and an improved skin feel. Mm. I mean, thank you. Thank you for explaining. It's, it's interesting to think about this, but I think when it comes to skin serums, I mean, we see so many different properties um, in skin serums. So do you think there could be other variations of this formulation? I mean, this is really just an inspirational formulation, right? Yes, sure. You can, you can adapt this formulation. You can use other um, active ingredients that work exactly in the way that you want your formulation to work. So an example from our portfolio is Gazosa. Uh, You've both mentioned spots uh, that can be caused by the masks. Um, Gazosa is an active ingredient that uh, actually reduces the sebum content and therefore works to reduce acne. Mm -hmm. Okay, so actually it would be a solution to this really famously induced mask knee, right, that we've been <laughs> seeing everywhere. Great. Thanks for explaining, Karina. Really interesting to think about the ingredients. And now a question over to our audience and to our viewers. Which which ingredient was interesting for you? Tell us and we'll be able to send you more information about it, supplementary to what you get from the formulation. So thank you all so much for participating in that poll. We'll be sending you follow up information as per your request. Now, going back to the trend, um, we thought about how we could provide physical comfort with this sense of togetherness. Um, but one of the other approaches um, of addressing this trend could really be by thinking about providing a level of mental comfort, really going into the direction of helping people feel confident through looking their best, which is something that's really important to us, especially as the world starts to open up again. Um, what, what could make people feel comfortable on a mental level, um, especially if they start to sort of self-groom a lot more and take more time for their appearance? Uh, perhaps over to you first, Alex, could you could you explain? what consumers are thinking about uh, in this in this realm? Sure. Um, so as we get back to socialising, it's, you know, it's natural that people want to present their best selves. You know, we haven't seen each other in a long time. Uh, so we want to show people that we've uh, been taking care of ourselves during the pandemic. Um, one aesthetic trend that's kind of starting to rise as a result of this is that idea of looking healthy and looking well. Um, and so that's going to start becoming a new kind of underlying consideration in our daily beauty routines. Um, but just because of that kind of concern around global health, we want people to tell us that we look well and you know we look like we've been well. So features that are associated with that kind of look of health is sort of hydration and that glow appearance of the skin um, that you, you sort of started to discuss through Soothe and Cool Serum. Um, but this will be sought out even more than ever before. So a glowing version of that formula could be really great. Um, but it's not just about skin. It's also about things like hair. So, for example, during lockdown, we know that, you know, women are taking the time to improve their hair health. Um, they're sort of avoiding heated tools, for example, looking at kind of um, cool ways to style their hair rather than heat based ways. Um, but also contemplating factors like softness and shine. So making sure that their hair looks glossy and healthy. 
Mm-hmm. And that that's actually something that really stood out to us because we thought about how we could actually instill this kind of sense of confidence um, amongst consumers who are opening up and starting to actually socialize a little bit more. So to address this trend, um, I'm really happy to now announce our second formulation, which we've named the Hair to be Beautiful Elixir. It's a, well, we call it an elixir, but it's a nourishing hair oil that can be applied to the hair, either as a leave-on treatment or as a pre-wash treatment. So just after watching that video, actually, um, I think there's a couple of important things to note. So when we look at what's happened to hair care products in the last few years, there have been two kind of really major growth areas. Um, The first being convenience. So consumers really looking to solutions that are easy to apply or give quick results. Um, And, you know, as we saw in that video, it's really easy to apply that serum. Um, And secondly, nourishment. So peptides, for example, that's kind of an ingredient that we're seeing transition over from skincare to hair care. So, for example, the ordinary, their multi-peptide serum or Monpure, who has a a kind of nourishing scalp mask. They're just kind of uh, aiming to to improve the skin at a scalp level to help the health of the hair and the structure of the hair follicles. Um, So products that can deliver on both of those needs, like the ordinary, or, you know, uh, like the um, Hair to be Beautiful Elixir, you know, the dropper and pipette, it means that uh, the formula can be applied directly to the scalp. Um, And, you know, so products that do this and deliver that nourishment in an easy way, they're really a holy grail for hair care users, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. So thanks, Alex. I think that's exactly what we were trying to do. We were trying to exemplify ways in which ingredients can really be used to deliver on this kind of moisturizing as well as this ease of use that consumers are so looking for. So now over to you, Karina. Um, Which are the ingredients that really enable these moisturizing claims um, that are so in demand at the moment? So uh, we have added one of our uh, conditioning agents. It's called Genevance Hydra. It is 100%, 100% renewable and it moisturizes and conditions, but it also um, reduces frizz. Um, for the glow and the shine um, that we have mentioned before, we've added Takuma butter and Muromuro butter. Uh, both leave the hair nice and shiny and not greasy and shiny. It's not weighing your hair down. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And I think to really target now ease of use as a second claim here, we really wanted to ensure that this formulation was liquid. So which ingredients make that possible? Yes. So, of course, a liquid product is much easier to spread through the hair evenly like a solid product. So this product is like a liquid butter. Um, And of course, as you know, the butters have a solid character. But if you combine it with natural emollients, the liquid state will be obtained, and um, the formulation um, also contains squalene as an emollient. And uh, this, for example, is something that Alex has mentioned. Um, it's also friendly to skin, so it's also uh, good to, for the scalp. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. Thanks for explaining um, on the ingredient level to think about what really delivers these ease of use and moisturizing claims. So now a question back to the audience. Tell us which ingredients stood out to you. So now that really sums up our first trend. Let's move on to our second trend, which we like to call hygiene beauty. Now, hygiene beauty is really all about the intersection of hygiene and beauty, particularly in light of the fact that hygiene is becoming a much more prominent player in the beauty domain. So again, I think following the pandemic, we saw a great rise in the importance of hygiene, particularly hand hygiene. So now, Alex, over to you. Could you explain this trend a little bit to us, please? Yeah, of course. Um, So the pandemic really drove, you know, the importance of hand hygiene. People are actively washing their hands more to prevent the spread of the virus. um, And that's confirmed by our research across the globe. So, you know, the UK, India, Brazil, over half of the population in these countries said they were using hand sanitizers more often. And they've become an on the go staple for a lot of consumers in their handbags, but also in a growing presence in public spaces. So gyms and restaurants and shops. 
But that means that hand hygiene products have had a really big you know, opportunity to shine over the last year. Uh, they've achieved huge value growth. And a lot of you know, brands previously more aligned with beauty, they want in on that. You know, they're beginning to enter this space with their own products, such as um, Aesop or Rituals or Guerlain. But all of them really wanted to go beyond the regular hygiene benefits. So adding in skincare benefits like moisturization or hydration, you know, really trying to care for hands as well. And for me personally, I think that's still the biggest opportunity for beauty brands at the moment. You know, creating sanitizer products to add to their range that match the personality of their consumers or, you know, match the sort of the type of space they're being used in and creating this more obvious premium tier of hygiene. So, for example, in a high end restaurant um, where, you know, the, the surroundings are very luxurious, the hand sanitizer used there should you know, really echo that luxury. It shouldn't smell cheap or leave your hands feeling dry. You know, it, it's a major expectation of, of prestige products. It's that they go beyond basic necessity and create an experience. And that shouldn't be different for hand sanitizers at all. Uh, it should give a high level of protection. Um, it should have premium ingredients, a really lovely fragrance, and also offer those skincare benefits that we spoke about as well. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thanks for explaining, Alex. I think for us, it's it's exactly that, really. I mean, it's really um, great and interesting for us to see that now um, beauty brands and personal care products are becoming much more a part um, of, you know, something so important like hand hygiene. Um, and we also really took to this idea of using this beauty twist to, de to deliver, excuse me, um, you know, formulations that actually are a little bit more premium. Um, so with this, um, we wanted to exemplify this through through um, our third formulation, which we've named Sanitize and Care. It's a gel hand cleanser. So with that video, we hope that it was able to illustrate a little bit more about the kind of gel like structure that makes up this formulation. Now, of course, the core component of any sanitizer or cleanser is ethanol. And we really had to make sure that our formulation met the WHO requirements for the amount of ethanol. However, for us, we really also wanted to think about exactly how we could give it this sort of personal care like twist, both from the perspective of the experience of use and also in terms of the benefits that it delivered. So we really wanted to ensure that it had this sort of gel like structure, that it didn't leave hands feeling sticky, but also that it kind of delivered these moisturizing, caring benefits that would be so great for people to use on the go. So now over to you, Karina. Can you talk us through the ingredients that make these features possible? Sure. Um, so uh, to start off, we are using one of our rheology modifiers, Hostasurin MCP. Uh, what's special about MCP is that it is able to uh, stabilize and thicken formulations containing this high amounts of alcohol. The um, amount of alcohol recommended by the WHO is 70%. So as formulators know, it's very tricky to stabilize formulations like that. But our MCP will do this for you. Uh, furthermore, it's also helpful for the skin feel. It's not leaving um, the skin sticky, which also happens a lot in this kind of formulations. Um, in this case, we have not used an emulsifier with uh, MCP. Everything is stabilized by the polymer just on its own. And the emollients that are uh, supposed to be stabilized in this formulations are Plantasense Olive ID and Carefree Light because we thought that we would go into this direction of the more premium skin feel. Um, something that Alex has mentioned that stood out was the uh, luxury um, environment. Um, and so we've created this formulation using those emollients. Uh, they actually moisturize the hands and in total, your hands feel not, uh, your hands will not feel dry after use or not sticky after use. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for explaining, Karina. It's really, yeah. for us, I think, super encouraging to see how we can use our ingredients um, to really deliver a nice hand experience, as well as, of course, cleansing the hands. Um, so now over to the audience again, to you viewers. Um, please tell us which ingredient was interesting for you. Which one, which one took you by surprise? So now on to our third trend, which we've named Beauty Unwrapped. Now, 
Interestingly, hygiene, again, um, and maintenance of high levels of hygiene during the pandemic was something that unfortunately in some cases also called for the use of more single-use products, so things like wipes, um, and it maybe also resulted in the use of a bit more packaging surrounding products just to prevent them from picking up germs um, and to cater to consumers who are a little bit more concerned with hygiene and, and prevention of germ spreading. So, Alex, first coming over to you, what is the con conversation about um, about this at the moment? Well, um, as you say, the pandemic, it's really put consumers in a quandary about sustainability. Um, so as a society, we've been trying to reduce our reliance on single use products. But, you know, over the last year, the need to maintain really high levels of hygiene has really won out over these good intentions. Um, you know, in some cases, we saw really frenzied hygiene behavior. So people disinfecting their groceries, for example, with single use wipes, um, you know, wiping down everything after use every single time. And, you know, it, it was it just meant that we were using a lot of single use products, as you said. Um, but as we, you know, in many parts of the world are starting to come out of this, this heightened sense of hygiene, it's starting to level out a bit more. So consumers uh, feel a bit more balanced about the need for hygiene and are uh, using it in their everyday routine where appropriate rather than sort of for absolutely everything. Um, but what we also know is that many consumers have developed this sense of eco guilt um, as they kind of reflect on what was necessary for them at the time, you know, during the outbreak, uh, but has made them feel, you know, that they've undone some of their good work from previous years. So that's why they're looking for more sustainable products now that can really help them to make amends. And as soon as they you know, find one product in a segment that can tackle that kind of issue, it's going to start to become an next expectation that all others in that segment will do the same. So sustainability, it's not so much a reason to buy a product instead of its functionality, but it, if you're faced with sort of a few different products that are similar and one is more sustainable, it does become a reason not to buy the other one. If you know the choice is between um, a plastic bottle or a glass bottle, for example. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And I think sort of honing in on this issue and becoming a little bit more granular, what does that mean in terms of, for instance, product packaging, which is something that's also really under scrutiny at the moment? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, so for packaging, I think especially plastic packaging, um, it's you know under increased scrutiny because uh, plastic pollution is really widely viewed as a really pressing environmental issue for everyone. Um, what I think is really interesting is that for beauty and personal care businesses, um, a lot of that responsibility is placed on them to package sustainability, uh, to package sustainably. Sorry. Um, so I think I think it's over half of consumers across the US uh, and Brazil told us that they expect brands to be the ones that provide those responsible packaging options. So, as I said, it's really down to brands uh, to do that and to create formulations that can work in non-plastic materials, um, you know, so such as paper or card to avoid getting left on the shelf, especially if you're placed, as we mentioned, next to other competitors who have managed to overcome that sustainability barrier. Um, obviously, the best way would to overcome that kind of uh, eco guilt would be to use absolutely no packaging at all. Um, Lush is ever expanding naked range for example it has shampoos it has cleansers skincare makeup perfume um you know showing that actually things like solid products that are packageless can occupy the same spot in the bathroom routine um as a liquid would but without any kind of loss in functionality and you know it's becoming a bit more of a battleground there mm -hmm. Exactly. So I think that that trend really also echoed with us. So I think in thinking about ways in which we could use our ingredients to deliver formulations that that didn't require so much plastic packaging, we really decided to dive in a little bit on solid products. So now a bit of background here just to explain the logic. Um, generally speaking, when you're looking at liquid personal care products, um, so, for example, something like a liquid shampoo or body cream, it typically consists of somewhere between 80 and 85 percent of water, in some cases even more. So the logic behind solid products is simple. It's that you remove the water content and then at the source, the consumer can use water. Um, but what you've done is that you've created a solid concentrate product. So 
really the benefit this delivers is, is very logical. By creating a solid concentrate product, you've got a product that has a lower volume for the same amount of use. So with a lower volume, it just by definition requires less packaging for the same amount of use. But then Alex, to your earlier point, thinking about sustainable uh, packaging options, so things like cardboard, for instance, um, solid products tend to lend themselves a little bit better to such packaging options and often could, could even require no packaging at all. So with this in mind, we really started to think about, you know, how we could really create more solid formulations. Um, and, and package them in, in different materials. Cool. That's really cool. Um, but also from a branding perspective, um, it's a really great way to show your environmental values to the consumer up front as well. So if you think about the fact that, you know, almost half of all personal care products have some kind of sustainable packaging claim on them. So, you know, eco-friendly packaging, but it's not always you know, really obvious uh, what that what that claim is or or what they've done differently. So an obvious visible differentiator like you know non plastic packaging that speaks volumes to to a consumer. Um, we've seen a lot of players tapping into that and tapping into that kind of solid uh, solid formulation. So you know as well as Lush that we mentioned earlier, you've got new entrants like Ethic, but you've also got huge brands. So L'Oreal has done this through Garnier and through um, L'Oreal Men Expert selling these kind of solid shampoo bars and making sure they're marketed as sustainable alternatives to their liquid counterparts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so for us, the starting point here was thinking about ways in which we could find alternatives to liquid formulations. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to our fourth formulation, which we've called the Hair Necessities Bar. It's a solid shampoo um, that really foams up very nicely, cleanses the skin, but, uh, sorry, cleanses the hair, um, and is also actually gentle on the skin. Great. So we hope that video gave you a little bit of an illustration as to how this shampoo really works, what it looks like, what it feels like to use it. I think for us, it was really important to create something that could really be an alternative to um, a liquid product. So we really wanted this shampoo to foam properly, cleanse nicely and also not be too harsh on the skin. So now over to you, Karina, which are the ingredients that make this possible? So um, in this formulation, we have used our anionic surfactant Hostapon SCI85. Um, this is a solid surfactant, which contributes to the um, solid matter of the formulation. Uh, we have combined it with the um, with two surfactants from the glucotane range. The glucotane range is a, a mild, uh, gently cleansing sugar sugar based surfactant range. So in this case, we have used Glucotane Care and Glucotane Plus, but of course you could use others um, depending on what your um, goal for the formulation is. In this case, we wanted caring uh, and the most form we could get with those uh, Glucotane surfactants. Um, an additional uh, ingredient is Baraclay Old Rose. Uh, the clay, of course, in this formulation is uh, contributes also to the solid character of this formulation. Um, but it's a good addition. Uh, clays in general, they are also able to gently remove the dirt and the grime from the scalp. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Karina. It's really interesting, actually, to think about the clay. Um, and also, I suppose it's quite intuitive to think about a solid ingredient actually resulting in a solid product. So that's it's great. To, it's, it's, it's more intuitive and logical than maybe uh, people people know. Um, so, yeah, um, to the audience now, which ingredient caught your eye? Which one's interesting for you? Let us know. Great. So thank you for answering our poll. And now we're moving on to our final formulation. Now, we're still on the topic of solid products um, and solid formulations, um, still thinking along the lines of how we can reduce plastic waste and plastic packaging. But we actually thought about taking a different perspective on this. So solid products in themselves provide so many different, you know, widespread benefits. They're not just um, an alternative to standard liquid products. And we really expect them to infiltrate beauty and personal care as a whole uh, by providing their own benefits. So perhaps, Alex, you could take us uh, through this a little bit more. 
Yeah, sure. Um, I think, yeah, it is really interesting to take that more experiential perspective towards solids as well, because that sometimes gets forgotten about and we talk about it as a straight swap. Um, but actually, as well as being a sustainable swap for liquid products, solids offer a completely different usage experience and offer a lot of different benefits, um, especially when it comes to things like travel. Um, which we already spoke about is something that's going to be, you know, a, a real priority for a lot of people as um, as the world opens up. So you can, you know, take it away and it won't account towards your um, liquid allowance. But also, you know, it could be evenly or individually portioned up uh, if you're just taking a short trip away. And that saves a lot of space in your luggage as well. Um, but I think also from that more experiential point of view, you know, even if we start to travel more, it's still going to be in a bit more of a timid way. And, um, you know, we'll still be quite wary. You know, we've gotten used to our home comforts over the last year. We haven't had to travel. And so there's maybe, you know, a new routine or new products that we're using a lot more. Um, or, you know, we've, we've widened the scope of what we do in our beauty routines and we want to take that with us. So solid formats would allow us to take, you know, a, a load of different products, you know, especially to spaces where people feel a bit vulnerable or a bit out of their comfort zone. So, you know, new countries, hotels and hostels, for example, for, for you know, people wanting to travel you know, on a budget and uh, they're able to take that whole routine with them. I think that's particularly important when we talk about, you know, the growing need for self-care um, and for skin care in particular, there's a really big overlap. So consumers are starting to link taking time for themselves and relaxation with, you know, a ritual of skin care, basically, you know, making it almost a meditative process. It's become a bit of a way to self-soothe. Um, at a time when we felt very tense, tense and very anxious. Um, and so we're seeking out all of these relaxing practices that make us feel good, um, such as skincare treatments, you know, and we're, we're looking on the Internet, we're looking on social media to see how other people are soothing themselves as well. And a lot of the time it can be through things like skincare. Mm. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, exactly. I think for us, it was really interesting to now see this growing link between the use of skincare um, as self-care as well. Um, and so with that, it's really great to be able to introduce you now to our final formulation, the Nourishing Bath Melt. So great. Um, we hope that that formulation video actually illustrated a little bit about the nourishing bath melt to you. But really, it's it's a bath melt, um, as it says in the name. So what that means is that for a user to use it, they would just drop it into the bathtub where it would dissolve. And then all they'd have to do is sit in the bath, relax, and they benefit from first cleansing and also moisturizing um, benefits. So that's really what we wanted to achieve here. So delivering skincare benefits whilst also thinking about ways in which consumers could use skincare as a way to relax. Um, so now, Karina, over to you. How does this formulation really deliver these, these moisturizing and cleansing benefits, which really mean that a user doesn't have to moisturize and cleanse? They can just sort of relax in the tub. What is it? Which are the ingredients behind it that make that possible? So there's actually a couple of uh, two-in-one or multifunctional ingredients to start up. Um, there's the glucotane sens. The glucotane sens is from the sugar surfactant branch that I've mentioned uh, that I have mentioned earlier. Um, but in this case, it is of course cleansing, but it is had also had, excuse me also has re uh, fatting properties. Mm -hmm. So um, it reduces the use, or you can reduce the use of actual skin conditioning agents. Um, the second ingredient that has multifunctional properties is the plant essence cocoa butter. Uh, it smooths and softens the skin, but it also helps uh, with um, boosting skin regeneration. And then we have a third component. Uh, this is the emulsifier. It's plant essence emulsifier SFO. It's a sunflower based emulsifier. Uh, it is great for two-in-one cream washes, for example, it, because it does not only stabilize the formulation, but it also leaves a subtle afterpeel. Ah, okay, interesting, interesting. It sounds like a really nice combination of ingredients included there. Um, but then another question, um, which are the ingredients that actually provide the solid format in this formulation? 
So this would be the second use of the plant essence cocoa butter. Um, the plant essence cocoa butter is so, is a solid at room temperature, a soft solid at room temperature. Um, so here it helps with the solid format. Okay, great. Thank you, Karina. So now back to our viewers. Tell us what you think. Which of the ingredients in this formulation was interesting to you? Great. So thank you all very much for participating in our last poll. That really wraps up our final formulation for today. As a reminder, all the formulations are exclusively available in the related content, but to access all of the Beauty Forward content in full, please sign up for Clary Hub. Uh, the link is in the purple box on your screen. It's our free customer platform, and it's going to give you unrestricted access to all of our trends, all of our formulations, of course, but as well, all the ingredients in each formulation. You'll also be able to watch this webinar on demand there. So for any of your colleagues who missed it, please uh, feel free to share that with them. We'd now like to, yes, thank you again for your attention and open up for questions. Um, we have a first one that came in during the webinar, um, and it's how is the hygiene trend set to evolve? So perhaps over to you, Alex, to answer that one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there is going to be a kind of step change, I guess, in our global standard of hygiene. Um, not sort of a huge shift in that we're, we're all going to kind of live in a bubble, but I think things like touchless or contactless ways to kind of distribute products, you know, across the face or in the hair, these already exist. Um, and they're likely to be adopted more widely. So kind of, uh, you know, touchless uh, aerosol type or, or hair mist or face mist um, is something that, that we can really use to get around that, that constant touching of the face. Um, but also incorporating hygiene further into the beauty side of things. So finding a way to bridge the gap between personal care and you know, what is considered beauty. So um, in Asia, we already see a lot of uh, companies and a lot of retailers that sort of have a, a way to match your face coverings with a makeup look. Um, but also at a more kind of product level, things like adding antibacterial elements into uh, regular beauty formulations. Um, so, for example, we've seen foundations that reference um, natural antimicrobial ingredients, for example. Um, as we mentioned, some things like solid formats, um, I think that is, is something that we'll still see. And, and it, it's not so much about sort of package less, but it's about solid formulas that are sort of packaged in you know, eco-friendly containers um, and just really making sure that things are sealed off and really protected from any kind of external germs or, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, thanks, Alex, thanks. And actually on that topic um, of packaging, we've received another question. It's what other types of products, so other than solid products, can be sold unpackaged? Um, any thoughts on that one, Alex? Yeah, um, so this, again, is something that, that we spoke about. So with that eco-guilt uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, there's been um, you know, that tension between what is hygienic and what is eco-friendly. So I think you know, packaging individual solid products goes, is one way to go about that. Uh, but the other way, and, and what, we start, what we started seeing before the pandemic, was uh, things like um, refill stations in, in shops, especially as kind of bulk buying and that side of eco-friendly really started to rise. Um, I think there's certain products that lend themselves well to that. Uh, so things like shampoos, conditioners, um, body wash, for example. But when it comes to things like facial care or, or makeup or, or those more sort of beauty side of products, I think those, those still individually packaged, packaged but maybe solid formulas are still going to be preferred. Um, just because it's about sort of how often you use, how much of the product you use at a time, et cetera. I think refill stations can come back. I think they can bounce back. You know, as we said, it's, it's something that consumers have been a little bit concerned about with hygiene worries. But uh, I think enough kind of mainstream retailers are starting to do that, um, even in places like uh, South Korea, where, you know, sort of individual packaging and those kind of hygiene elements have been really, really strict. So I think the idea of refillable products 
if, if that can work over in, in places like South Korea and in you know, China and Japan, where they're really concerned about hygiene, um, taking that standard and bringing it over to countries like Europe, countries like the US, there's a way to manage that sort of eco-friendly responsibility with um, sort of packageless or with sort of buying in bulk. Thanks, Alex. Thanks. Oh, we just had another question come in. Um, so can we order samples of the formulations? Um, I can take that one. Um, yes. Um, so that's just something where you would have to sign up again for Clary Hub. From there, you can easily get in contact with your um, regional salesperson who will be able to refer you accordingly. Um, great. Um, waiting on a few more questions. Um, to the audience, if you do have any more questions, please feel free to write them in. So we've had a question about the cocoa butter um, used in the formulation. Is it organic? Um, perhaps, uh, Karina, could you just talk a bit more around the certification around that product? Um, to my knowledge, it is not organic, but um, I will get back to the person who asked that question. I have already noted this question down. Great. Thanks for that one, Karina. Um, just a final point then. Um, we did receive one or two questions um, related to viewing of the webinar. Um, so just to be clear, this webinar can be viewed um, on demand. Um, again, if you sign up for our customer platform, Clary Hub, um, you'll be able to view this webinar on demand. You can also view it again at this link. Um, so if, if you had to, if you have colleagues who missed it or whatever, you can definitely uh, explain that to them. Great. Um, we're really closing in um, on time now. So if there are no other questions coming in, we will wait um, and then we will um, start to close the chat. Yeah, another question um, about. Um, samples, so really any um, questions about samples when it comes to the ingredients or the formulations, um, please sign up again for the customer portal and then from there you can request samples um, of formulations or ingredients as you wish. Um, but with that, I think that's absolutely um, almost everything we have time for today. So. Um, if there are no other questions, um, we will um, be getting back to you via email. But thank you all again for tuning in and for your time today. Goodbye. Thanks, Jasmine. Bye, everyone. Bye.